Chicago suffering with a surge in gun violence, and now it is trying to use high-tech tools to fight it. The police department using a computer algorithm to generate a list of people most likely to get shot and most likely to do the shooting. Now, it's based on a list of things um, like arrest records, shootings, gang affiliations, and the Times reports that so far it seems to be working as more than 70% of the people involved in shootings were in fact in this database. But privacy advocates, they don't like this list at all. They say it's a slippery slope when police hold a secret database that singles people out. Okay, let me play devil's advocate. I get the privacy concerns, but if you're the Chicago PD, if you're Ram Emanuel and you say, do something about the gun violence. It's the OK Corral every day in the Windy City here. This is crazy. Instead of just doing a blanket, if you target, as they said, the people most likely to offend or be offended, and you concentrate your resources there, is that really too much Big Brother? Or are they, and it seems to be effective at this point, addressing or concentrating on the right population? Well, let's ask, uh, where does it stop? So suppose you start saying, uh, who's most likely to use drugs? You go to every college campus. You want to just set police down on every college campus and start saying, well, you know, college kids are likely to have drugs. Let's get all the kids from Harvard and, and from whatever school, Duke and Georgetown. Uh, I don't think we would tolerate that. I think at some point you'd say, well, you're just having just casting this huge net and you're going to catch a few kids. And you're going to catch a lot of people you wouldn't expect to catch. So here, yeah, if I'm in a depressed area and, you know, maybe I am more likely to be shot, but I think at some point you're really undermining constitutional protections and how effective it's going to be. I mean, really, you're probably going to be much more protective by simply having officers community policing again and having them walk a beat because simply having the officer present or officers present although, will change although that. Although, Mayo, um, you know, we saw in the last mayoral election the idea of, yes, it was stop and frisk, but under the broader umbrella of community policing, that became a dirty word too because they said you're now trying to focus your attention in one community. It does seem to me, Jimmy, that I wasn't too crazy about this. It really did remind me of Minority Report. Yeah. Uh, and if people have seen the movie, not bad, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it shows what seems like a good premise that can go too far. Um, however, I, I don't know what, if, if you know where this is going to happen, and I hate the argument, but I'll say it, they're not planning evidence. If people are doing something wrong and using guns they weren't licensed for or, in, or, or involved the commission of a crime that they shouldn't have been, they're getting them. They're, it's not that, you know, like the Minority Report, they're anticipating that next Tuesday you're going to be on the corner buying some crack, so we're going to arrest you now. They're getting them in the act of it. Why should we be concerned? Well, I don't know if they're getting them in the act of it, and, and the validity of algorithmic evalu evaluations takes more time than you have here, okay? This is, I don't think that it's long enough to say that it's really 70% effective. The problem that I have is that so you're putting people who have been arrested before and, and other criteria into a computer, and then they automatically become suspects. And, and what that gives rise to is targeting people who may not be committing crimes, who are trying to, to rehabilitate themselves and so on and so forth. It, it's, it almost reminds me of like rounding up the usual suspects. Let's put it all into a computer database and all of a sudden these are all the suspects. I don't have a problem with using this information to target areas that you should focus on, to, to target <coughs> gang members and so on and so forth that you yeah. should focus on with known information. But use it as an initial tool, focus on a particular area because of it, and then follow the Constitution as opposed to just supposing that because you did it before, you're more likely to do it again. I'm going to ignore the guy next to you who might be the one holding and the gun. And to Jim's point also, if you're just a hardworking person who goes and happens to live you know, near some people who may commit crimes, and again, normally you're talking about a very small percentage of people in any particular neighborhood. If it's 1% of the people in New York City, it's 80,000 people. We don't have that many people that are committing these crimes. Uh, if you are the one who goes to work, the many people who go to work every day and come home, you're going to get targeted too because you're likely to be the victim, but you're not going to be treated that way. And mm -hmm. then if you happen to get shot or tased or your 12-year-old Tamir Rice gets shot, the justification is going to be, well, you're on this list. I mean, how do they implement it? 
You know, so you put it in, you, you use your algorithm, they and you say come up with a list of names. They're going to concentrate in a six-block area, I'll make it up, and that they believe that's where the concentration of former blood scripts or whatever are now going to be located. That's where the drug trade's based or whatever yeah, else. But they don't need a computer for no. that. This is what they, this is, you know they've been guns. doing for a long time. Yeah. All right. Guys, thank you. Um, and again, uh, Mark and uh, Doug. Thanks for nothing. Uh, I kid because I care. Coming up next, everybody, I got some headlines. Guys, thank you. Thank you.